Welcome to Ecoholics. I am Sanat Srivasta, and here in this lecture, we will discuss about the classical theory of economic development. So, this is the first lecture in the series of economic growth and development. So, here this lecture is very, very important in order to understand the base of the economic growth and development as a separate discipline under economics. So, here we are starting with the classical economic growth theory. Now, first of all, the question arises, what do you understand by the term classical? Now, there are few economists comes under the category of classical economist because their ideology, their thinking runs in the same direction, like starting from Adam Smith, David Ricardo, Thomas Malthus, JB say these are the economists club together and converted into the category called the classical economist because their ideology, their thinking, their economic growth approach or more or less it remains in the same direction. So here the classical economist theory of development, this actually led to the starting of economic growth and development and why growth is vital. Because if we understand this lecture from the current perspective as well, now India is trying to become a $5 trillion economy by the year 2024-25. So we need to understand how this old theory can connect into the current perspective of Indian economy. So here, first of all, we see the provisions of this theory. Now the number one provision which led to the emphasis by the classical economist was on Now what classical economist said that laissez-faire theory should be adopted Now in order to grow for a country's GDP growth rate development They need to free up their market from the government control or the control from labor union so whenever the economy is working free it means without much control of the top authority or the government then that economy can flourish and can work more efficiently in order to improve their gdp growth rate that's what the first notion means laissez-faire means free market economy here free market economy means less government control the second thing which classical economists led a big, we can say major emphasis on, that was on capital accumulation. Now, first of all, we need to understand what are the factors of economic growth. Now, the factor of economic growth, we need to understand that there are two types of factors of production. Number one is capital and number two is labor. These are the basic other than that, we have also land, we have entrepreneurs, etc. But for the basic production purpose, we have two major factors of production that is labor and capital. So here, classical economists led emphasis on capital accumulation. Now, what does it mean? It means whenever you are accumulating capital, because if you are saving a lot of money, suppose for an individual's perspective, you are saving money, it means you will have surplus beyond your consumption. Then also you can spend in the economy as an investment. So this is what the classical economy said that capital ac accumulation is the first thing is actually key driver to achieve the desired economic growth. So whenever the country is accumulating wealth that actually becomes converted into investment and then investment converted into profit. So I'll give you a simple example. Like for example, if we see um, cultural revolution in the China, in 1949 what they did they did they focused on simple things like primary sector so they created surplus so from the year 1949 if we say when china introduced cultural revolution or experienced cultural revolution till the year 1978 they focused totally on agriculture sector the primary sector and what happened in 1978 they introduced the open door policy under Deng Xiaoping so what does it mean it means at this particular point of time they were producing primary products especially agriculture product and they were creating surplus so the capital accumulation happened during that time then what happened they invested a lot of capital into the secondary sector that is manufacturing sector and you know so since 1978 till we can say 2019 China experienced huge amount of growth double digit growth double digit sustained growth rate for many quarters many months and especially the fastest growing economy for the long time so we can say that that particular surplus invested during this point of time especially in the manufacturing sector that's why they were able to achieve the desired growth rate the third important thing what classical economists said about that 
the most important thing is profits Bro because profits are important whenever an entrepreneur or any investor will see that there is a scope of profit they will invest huge amount of capital into that it means profits are working as an incentive for the investors so profits are very very vital in order to move investment towards a particular direction like for example currently indian economy now what indian economy is doing or what policy makers are doing they are opening the market it means they are liberalizing fdi policy so this is an incentive for the foreign investors to come and make in india that's what the purpose of make in india so that's the same thing it means whenever an investor will see the profit they will invest into huge amount of capital in that particular sector the fourth thing that classical economists said that there is a tendency that profits will decline now this is like a same business cycle ups and downs will come so if you have certain kind of profit at the height obviously that will come down so what were the factors behind the decline in the profits according to classical economists they were saying that whenever profits are actually reached in a higher point they started declining they started decline at least till the point they have actually gone on to zero so whenever the profit will reach to zero what will happen why profits are declining because it will actually reach to the saturation where the labor cost goes up so if you see the example of increasing labor cost the best example of this labor cost increasing is chinese slowdown so we see in the 2015 china experienced labor market slowdown because the wages started rising in 2015 just because we can say that the large amount of competition among the chinese firms or the foreign firms and the domestic firms in china so what happened whenever the, you will experience the increase in the competition of the industries obviously the wages will go up and when the wages will go up obviously your cost of production goes up and whenever cost of production goes up it means your cost is high and you have to give a big share of a revenue towards the cost it means profits will decline because what's the formula of profit profit is equals to revenue minus cost so if your cost is increasing it means is revenue small and, and ultimately it will have impact on your profit as well the fifth and the last thing is about stationary state now the classical economists were of the opinion that capitalist economy will reach the stationary state now what are the conditions of reaching the stationary state a stationary state means the saturation point so when an economy will reach that particular point the most important thing when they actually drained out their natural resources like you can see that the demand of pol that is petroleum and oil products in the middle east countries they are declining just because on the two things they have found shale gas and the another thing the renewed focus on renewables so now the countries are focusing on the green energy that is why we can say that middle east countries are reaching a stationary state towards the production in the oil sector so that's the main thing whenever you drain out certain natural resources the another thing is, apart from a stationary state is that we have profits declining cost is increasing so the cost of capital goes up like for example smith said that cost of wages will go up and that will actually lead to the stationary state for the economy ricardo said that increase in the rent as well as increase in the wages will lead to an economy into the stationary state so that's what they wanted to say now what happened if you see the same model applied to a current situation that is what the we can say correlation of economic theory towards the current aspect if you see that now india is moving towards free market economy it means less government control in every sector like in air india what government is trying to do they are actually selling the stake in air india or they are thinking about privatization of air india it means less government control in civil aviation sector on the same lines they have done a lot of initiatives in other sector as well via disinvestment process they are same thing they are also thinking about in the public sector banks as well so these are the things now what is capital accumulation it means government is promoting savings government when because people will save that household income becomes into or we can say converted into borrowing so that will actually ultimately lead to the capital accumulation again whenever you will see profit as an incentive lot of investor will come and invest in india like the same thing the trade war going on 
between China and the United States. What happened? The companies or the big firms are relocating from China. So they are relocating towards other countries like Southeast Asian countries, ASEAN countries. Uh, their generally favorite destination is Vietnam. So what India is doing? India is attracting these companies towards our domestic economy. So if they are relocating from China, they must come to India. That's what India is trying to say. Now, these are the two important things that will come into future, like whenever the profit will decline in a stationary state of the other industry. Like we can say domestic industries are actually reaching to the stationary state. You can refer to the MSME, uh, MSME lecture of this economic survey 2018 and 19. So I hope you understand the correlation of the classical theory of economic growth and development and its implication towards the real economy. So if you like the video, please give a big thumbs up and do subscribe Ecoholics and click on the bell icon so you'll get the latest notification of the lecture. Apart from this, do mention in the comment box if you want to say anything because it feels good from our part if you mention something in the comment box. It's like a reward for us. And apart from this, I just want to inform you that we have a mobile app and where you'll find all the courses, full courses for economics, optional UPSC, Indian Economic Services, uh, UGC Net Economics, Econometrics, Mathematical Economics and many other subjects. For that, more details visit ecoholics.in our website and we also initiated a free test series for both mains as well as Indian Economic Services and UGC Net Examination. So if you want to enroll it for the free registration, you can also visit ecoholics.in. I hope you like this video, like this initiative of Ecoholics. Please share it with, share it with your friends, colleagues, etc. And just uh, be with Ecoholics. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.